This episode is proudly sponsored by Chill Bombs, the makers of handmade, all-natural CBD-infused bath bombs. Check them out at chillbombs.com and use our code SPIRITS for 10% off. Enjoy the show, y'all! Hey y'all, I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink. Pause for dramatic effect. (laughs) So what are we drinking tonight, Mitchell? Our beer tonight is Richter's Pilsner, brewed and canned by Goat Island Craft Brewing, LLC in Coleman, Alabama. I stumbled there a little bit. That's okay. 5.6% alcohol by volume. Let's read the can. A local merchant found a handwritten beer recipe in the attic of his old downtown building in Coleman. The recipe was found with other personal items of William Frederick Richter, who owned Richter Saloon in the late 1800s. The mixture of English and Old German was eventually translated and resurrected, and now it is our flagship beer. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. End quote. It's not surprising. Uh, Coleman has a very large German population. They have a really big Oktoberfest and everything, so... Yeah. The fact that it's a German-style beer makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Personal review time. Here we go. This is a top-of-the-line Pilsner for me. Um, It's just the right amount of bitterness uh, with a persistent crispness. It's just, it's really nice and sparkly all the way through. I enjoy it quite a bit. Think uh, high-quality, high-dollar Bud Light, uh, and I hope that that's not insulting because what I mean by it is that it's it's an all-day, everyday type of beer that you can tell was made with love. It's really wonderful. Uh, And I don't really like Pilsners, and I really like this one. So, there you have it. It got a 10 out of 10, Leah. Cool. What did you think about it? Uh, It really reminds me of getting drunk in Czech Republic. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because Czech Republic, they do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, German style. Like, um, the beer producer there uh, where I was at in Prague is Budvise Budvar and it's like the original Budweiser yeah, I guess and it is. Um, yeah that's what it tastes like it tastes like Czech beer to me um, which is not my favorite I don't care for a Pilsner but I mean it's good it's drinkable mm-hmm. if someone you know tapped a keg of that and said here free beer I would drink that all night no problem <laughs> it's good yep it's very good. But I don't like Pilsners. So. Uh, I gave it such a high score because really you could just have this all freaking day. You could just sit there and drink it because it's so nice. Yeah. And refreshing. It's a good anytime kind of beer. Yes, I agree. Our shot in the dark for the night. It's Christmas in July, y'all. We are having Appalachian Sip and Cream Eggnog uh, that we've had on before. Actually, right at Christmas time. It's been in the fridge ever since. Let's hope nobody gets any kind of diseases I out of I smelled it. It smelled fine. Uh, it's produced and bottled by Sugarlands Distilling Company, LLC, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's 20% alcohol by volume. And if you would like the full review, uh, go back 30 episodes on the dot to episode number 40, which was titled Downhill Bummers. It was right before Christmas. It was like the 23rd or something. Mm, nice. I don't know. I looked at the date uh, looking up the review before. I think it was like December 23rd, around there. But uh, it's delicious. It got a 9 out of 10. I'm looking forward to it again tonight. I've got me a cup of it um, on ice. It's on our little uh, 20-sided die ice cube. And yeah, I'm we have a D20 excited. ice cube, and it's I like it. It's cute. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, D20 ice cube maker. Mold. And yeah, mold. There you go. And it's wonderful. And I just took a sip of it. It tastes excellent. Reminds me of Christmas time. And I'm excited to uh, shoot it later on. Cool. And that's cool, it cool. for the alcohols, Leah. All what right. do we have next? We have listener mail. Oh, yay. Listener mail. Listener mail. Listener mail. All right. We have a postcard sent uh, from Bonnie. Thank you so much for sending this, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, it is a postcard from the Prairie Grove Battlefield State Park, and I believe that's in Arkansas. I don't um, know. It's of the Morrow House. Um, and it on the back, it gives, you know, some historical information about the Morrow House. But she writes, saw no ghost, but did see Edgar the Groundhog. Oh. I applied for a job here, so maybe more stories to come. 
<laughs> Cheers, Bonnie. That's wonderful. Let's all wish Bonnie the best of luck and and just all the good vibes for getting that job because I want to hear ghost stories out of that place. And also, I want a freaking picture of Edgar the Groundhog. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, you should have sent that, Bonnie. I love the, the fact that the Groundhog has a name. Um, yeah. And it's Edgar, right? And it's Edgar. You and use you use know, that name all the I'll fucking time. I'll say Edgar's time. one of my favorite names. So, um... Uh. Perfect. Edgar and Horatio, for whatever reason, I name things that a lot. Because mm-hmm. um, I name everything. It's, uh, I have a problem. But, you do. Um, yeah, thank you, Bonnie. I really yeah. appreciate that. Uh, and I'm, Edgar. Thank you, Edgar. And Edgar the Groundhog. Mm-hmm. Wishing you all the best as well, Mr. Groundhog. Um, hey. Yeah, but I'm going to put that up on my wall as soon as I get that stupid railing mounted. I haven't done it yet. It's only been two weeks. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> It's fine. No, it's just I haven't um, steeled myself to get on a ladder yet. I don't like heights. I don't like ladders specifically. Um, so I told you I'll do it. Okay. Well, you just got to remind me. Well, when we're done with this, let's put that thing up. Not not tonight. I, I got things to do. <laughs> You're going to be a couple shots in at that point. Exactly. So. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe I'll get a ladder and put it up later. But we'll do anyway. it Saturday. Yeah. There we go. Well, I have a show on Saturday, so that's probably not going to happen either. Uh, we'll do it Sunday. Okay, deal. Owned. All right. By the time this comes out, hopefully, <laughs> we will have the rail up, and I will take some pictures of it and put it on social media. All right. We'll see. Okay. I'm on pins and needles. All right. Um, so why don't we go into our funny place name of the evening? Let's do it, please. All right. Well, we are going to Smoky Ordinary, Virginia. Smoky Ordinary? Smoky Ordinary. Okay. That sounds like fun. All right. So to understand this place name, you have to know um, what the word ordinary meant back in the day. Um, so an ordinary used to be what you would refer to now as like an inn. It was like a oh. station on the road for travelers to stop in, get a meal, um, kind of like a ye old bed and breakfast kind of mm. situation. I didn't know um, that. So when there was an ordinary on the site there in ordinary, smoky ordinary Virginia, um, and it was established. They have records of it being there as early as 1750. So it's a really old ass area, okay. um, like settled by you know colonists and white people. I mean, obviously. Hey, you all know my spiel about that. But anyway. Such a racist. <laughs> um, so, like I said, it has been, you know, there was an ordinary on that um, location as early as 1750. Uh, but during the American Revolution, local warehouses in the surrounding settlement were burned by uh, the British Colonel Tarleton. Um, and the legend says that uh, that occurrence, the burning of the local warehouses and stuff, is what sort of morphed it into the smoky ordinary because I guess there was smoke in the the inn, the smell of the smoke continued, that kind of thing. So it just okay. I, it became the smoky ordinary um, and that's what the town was named after. Uh, it also, they said that uh, the reason the ordinary itself wasn't burned down was during um, so do 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 the post office what? Oh, this is a separate story entirely. <laughs> Y'all just I got, got to witness. Confused. Y'all just got to witness Leah realize something. No, so there was a Revolutionary War story, and now we're to the Civil War story. I didn't realize we were oh, already okay. there. Anyway, all right. So it says this is. I'm reading from the uh, historical marker there in the town. Um, it says during the Civil War, the post office from 1832 to 1964 and in were spared when a Union officer recognized the inn's owner, Dr. George M. Ramney, as being a former classmate of the University of Pennsylvania. So it didn't get burnt down during the Civil War because, um, you know, the guy leading the burning crew was friends with the dude that owned it. So Okay. Rock on. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, was that it for the funny place name? Yeah, it's a really short historical marker. Well, it was exciting. See? I enjoyed it. Here's the historical marker. There it is. There's a tiny little marker. Yep. I'm glad that I got to see that. Actually, I bet it's a very large marker. Those historical markers are big and usually cast in metal. So, anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Can't tell you from the picture. Maybe it's just an ordinary marker. Possibly. Owned. All right, well, what's next? All right, we are going to Texas this time for our very first story, and we are talking about the ghost of El Muerto. Who? 
El Muerto. El Muerto. El Muerto. Doesn't that mean like dead or something? Death, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be talking about the mid 1800s. So around about 1840s, 1850s ish. Okay. So during this time, uh, the Texas Rangers had been uh, established. So I believe they were established in 1823 by Stephen Austin. And mm-hmm. he established this group of lawmen, I guess is the best way to put it, as people that would patrol and keep the settlements that he established there in Texas after the, uh, you know, Independence Revolution, Mexico right. thing. Texan Mounties. Yeah. After all that stuff went down, he hired these people to protect the settlers that he had brought into texas um he he had hired them to to protect his colony basically Mm -hmm. from uh the apache and comanche raiders that were very you know prevalent in that area because you know the land belonged to them um and then also (laughs) go figure and Mm -hmm. also the um uh people that were basically driven off the land the 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 native Mexicans, I guess. Right. Um, they, you know, there was a lot of cattle rustling. There were a lot of thieves and bandits and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So at in this time period, um, there was sort of a dispute between the United States and Mexico over what the border actually was between the United States and Mexico. The mm-hmm. United States claimed that it was the Rio Grande River, which it is today. Um, right. And then the... So, chalk up another win. <laughs> the Mexican government said that it was actually the Nueces River, um, and that was going to be the border. Wait. I don't know where that is. Um, it's a little bit further up. It's it's a couple hundred miles north. I'm mean, not going to be that far, but it's... So, like, you know where the Rio Grande cuts down like the noises is just a little bit up on that little jutty out part at the bottom okay um <laughs> that made no sense to it, anybody listening yeah. i'm sorry y'all. i mean i just said okay so we could move on um, i don't understand what you just said i, I just realized <laughs> i remembered from my spanish in college that noises means nut so this is the nut river Ooh, right Ooh, the nut I think mm. that's what it is. Will you Google Nueces for me? Well, how do you spell it? N U E C E S Nueces. N U not K N U E C E S. I think it means nut. I think it's the Nut River. <laughs> okay. Well, you can continue okay, while sorry. I look this up. So the fact that these two rivers sort walnuts. of walnuts. 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 <laughs> All right. Cool. It's not nuts. It's walnuts. I mean, it's it's nuts. Walnuts. Anyway, <laughs> so. Uh, well, there's two. There's nut, there's walnut, and there's cob nut. I assume it's just nut, yeah. but I I could be wrong. But that's yeah, wow, one of the only things that I've ever retained from my Spanish class. But whatever. Because <laughs> you were a little freak, <laughs> wanting to know how to pick up all the Mexican guys saying you'd s on their nueces. Nut. Yep. I don't think that I don't on their mm-hmm. nuts. No nope. nuesos. There we go. Mm-mm. Done. You're so strange. Anyway, <laughs> so they, um, I fucking lost my train of thought. We were talking about nuts. Yes. But what does that have to do with El Muerte? We were talking about the border. Oh, okay. And where the border um, was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, so you've got these two rivers and they're running relatively parallel. So it kind of leaves this sort of no man's land area in between the two rivers and that basically means that there's a lot of conflict there. Um, there's a lot of banditry, thievery, skullduggery, if you will. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's prime real estate for the Texas Rangers to go in and, you know, take care of things, be the law, I don't know, enforce their rules, Kick whatever. some nuesos. Yeah, that. Right? Um, so the Texas Rangers themselves were expert gunmen. They were, you know, cutthroat kind of rough and tumble dudes. And Mm -hmm. they were all pretty, I guess, legendary. They became folk heroes in and of themselves. A lot of them, uh, at least the early Texas Rangers. The individual Um, ones did? Yeah. Okay. And so two of these guys, excuse me, were living in that area. Um, so 
there was a dude named Creed Taylor and William Alexander Anderson Bigfoot Wallace. Okay. And we have actually talked about Bigfoot Wallace before because he is actually the dude that Bigfoot Texas is named after because we did that in a funny place names a few episodes ago. I do not remember that. Of course you don't. You don't remember anything I talk about. <laughs> not, not a lot of time. Um, a lot of the time. It's because you're go. playing video games on your cell phone. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm looking up stuff for you. I'm looking up how to say... How to suck on the Nuesos. Then why are you tilting it like you've got to have motion control? You have to do that for Spanish on Google. <laughs> you have to tilt it. Google Translate has tilt controls? Yeah. Well, yeah, in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> There's Spanish tilt controls. Mm. I'm surprised you didn't know about the Spanish tilt controls. I was unaware, but good to know. Yep. All right. So, back to El Muerto. Um, so... In 1850, there was a cattle rustler, and he mm-hmm. was known throughout South Texas uh, just as Vidal. His name was Vidal. Gore Vidal. Uh, no, right? I don't think so. Just Vidal. Okay. Like Cher, just mononymous. <laughs> one name. Okay. Not that I'm like equating Cher with cattle rustling, but you know well, what I mean. Well, we all know about Cher's past. <laughs> she um, has a very shady past. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, he was a very notorious cattle rustler and he stole so many horses and cattle that he became just the dude that you wanted to catch. You know what I mean? He was wanted dead or alive. There was a bounty on his head and everybody was after this butt face. So exactly like Cher. Exactly. Just across the board. Yeah, definitely. You think Um, this might have been Cher in a previous life? It's very possible. Yeah. I think this is Cher. Definitely. (laughs) Um, So during the summer of 1850, uh, this Vidal man took advantage of a Comanche raid that was happening in the north. Um, So the Comanche uh, tribe, you know, raided against a settlement up north and all of the Texas Rangers go up there to try to, you know, help out the settlements, disperse the raiders, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So while all of the law folk are up north, this Vidal guy and his little group of cattle rustlers show up. Good old gore. He's got three friends. He's got henchmen. Oh. Um, and so he goes into the towns that are now no longer protected by the Texas Rangers. Um, and he starts horse rustling. He steals a fuck ton of horses. So he and, upgraded. Yeah. He steals a bunch of horses from the San, around the San Antonio River area. And he starts heading south towards Mexico. Um, but what Vidal actually didn't know that among the herd of horses that he stole during that you know rustling tom uh he stole several of the prized mustangs that belonged to creed taylor Uh-oh. who was one of those big you know yeah. fancy texas ranger dudes that huge I was mistake talking about yeah bigfoot guy see i was listening no bigfoot's his friend <laughs> he's not bigfoot bigfoot yeah. is his buddy um i know i know so he was um actually not gone to the north usually he would have been one of the very first guys to go up and like disperse raider troops and all of that stuff but i guess he was sick that day or decided not to go i don't know who creed yeah creed taylor and it turns out he just wasn't up there when they expected him to be so when he realized that some of his horses had gotten stolen he was like oh fuck no we're not doing this shit <laughs> um so uh he was like all right if you're gonna steal from me we're gonna get this shit together so he gathered up his friend Bigfoot. So now Bigfoot's back. Oh, yay. He gathers up his friend Bigfoot Wallace and a rancher that lived nearby. Uh, and his name, his last name was Flores. I don't know what his first name was, but they just Wilmer. give him the last name of Flores. Wilmer Flores is a baseball player. Okay, let's go with Wilmer. Right um, now. It could have been his great, great grandfather because I think he's like 21. Ah, cool. So, yeah. Excellent. God, well, people are so young these days. Yeah. Fucking weird. A, man. Um, but Ugh. Bigfoot Wallace and Creed Taylor and Flores uh, were really good at tracking because, you know, as Texas Rangers, um, that's something that they learn to do just training wise. So they start tracking this group of people. And the fact 
that they have like a fuck ton of horses probably helps a lot, would be my guess. Um, so they're tracking these people, tracking them, tracking them, and they make their way and they find this outlaw camp. And they're like, oh, fuck yeah, found them. Got them. <laughs> We're going to make an example out of these bitches. So they waited until nightfall when the bandits were asleep and they caught them unaware and they decided Unawares. to kill them. Yeah. But That's just exciting. killing them wasn't enough. There was a lot of like cattle rustling and livestock rustling mm-hmm. was worse than killing someone at this point. Like, yeah, it was more punishable than murder was. Like, yeah, it was, it was a, people's living. Yeah, it was a big fucking deal. So the Rangers decided that, you know what, we're going to have to set an example for them uh, of them, you know, and they mm-hmm. had tried things previously like they had. um just strung them up in a tree, left them hanging to die. They grabbed them they, really hard by the nueces. <laughs> Twisted. Yeah. Um, they shot them. They chopped them to pieces. They left their bodies out for bait. Like, they've done all Jesus. sorts of gruesome, awful things to these people, and the bandits kept coming. So they're like, you know what? We need one final dramatic, like, just, we need a statement piece, okay? <laughs> and so Ooh. Wallace was like, look. Guys, I got this. So Bigfoot Wallace beheaded Vidal. Yeah, not a big deal. They've done that. Yep. But they lashed his body, his headless body, into the saddle on the back of a wild Mustang. Mm -hmm. They tied the outlaw's hands to the pommel and they secured his torso upright. Shot in the dark. Oh, shit. Hold on. Mm -hmm. What did they do with his head? Did they A, tie it to the horse? Did they B, mount it on a spike? Or did they C, throw it down a well? I was so hoping that you would say tie it to a turtle. Because, (laughs) look. What? (laughs) I know you haven't watched Breaking Bad, but, uh, God, what's his name? The the famous guy who was in Machete and all that. Um, Oh, uh, Danny. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo is in Breaking Bad. And spoilers... He's an FBI informant, but his name in the show is Tortuga, which means turtle in Spanish. Yeah, I remember that part. And they cut his head. Someone cuts his head off. He's going for a meet, you know, to meet up to to do a sting operation. And Danny Trejo's head is tied to the top of a tortoise in the desert. And it's hilarious because there's also explosives in it and, it and it blows up. But anyway... I was really hoping you'd say that, but I since did you not. didn't, I'm not excited about any of these. Tie it to a horse. So I'm going to say I know what they are. Well. I know what they are because I was paying attention, hoping for the turtle. Didn't get it. So I'm going to say throw it down a well. You're incorrect. Of course I am. God damn it. Well, okay. What was it? They attached it to his sombrero and they tied the whole kit and caboodle to the horse. <laughs> Well, that's a fucking lame thing to do. His body's already tied to the horse. Yes. Um, a little more creative, they, <laughs> Texas well, Rangers. Uh, but they tied his, his sombrero in his head to the saddle of the horse with a long strip of rawhide. Um, and then they like kind of smack the horse on the ass and he starts bucking through out and he just runs. So soon... There's a lot of stories from local ranchers and, uh, like, bandits and stuff like that that people keep seeing a headless rider um, with a sombrero head sort of swinging back and forth on Ugh. the saddle. And more and more of these cowboys start, start, you know, spotting this thing. And they're freaked the fuck out and they start shooting it with bullets and it doesn't make it stop because obviously it's fucking dead. <laughs> um, and so the horse and the rider just rode around for a while and that's when this legend of El Muerto started. Um, they they call him El Muerto, the headless one. And, yeah. and he's just... It, the idea of this body kind of becomes this greater than life kind of legend thing um and eventually a posse of local ranchers captured the pony uh while it was drinking at a local watering hole and the tiny community uh, of ben bolt texas which according to this article is south of alice texas i don't know where any of that is (laughs) um apparently they caught the pony the corpse was still strapped to its back and it was all dried up and desiccated from the sun um, and it was all 
like riddled with bullet holes and uh, arrows from Native Americans and just like it was fucked up. And mm-hmm. so they're like, look, we can't keep having this creepy thing running around here. Um, yeah, we're going to bury it. So they did. So El Muerto's body is buried somewhere near that town. Um, and you would think that, you know, after they like did away with the whole desiccated, creepy horse corpse thing, that it would like go away. But it turns out it didn't because uh, travelers still in the area report to see the apparition. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the the um, well, They don't know where his body's buried, right? They, they know say. it's buried near that town, Ben Bolt, Texas. Yeah, but there's it's unmarked. They don't know. Yeah, it's an unmarked grave. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there have been, you know, sightings of the El Muerto ever since. In 1917, a couple traveling by covered wagon to San Diego, oh, uh, Texas, camped. Uh, oh, San Diego is a place in Texas. Okay. Yes. <laughs> It's yeah. like they are a long fucking way off. Yeah, no. They camped for the night outside of that town. Um, they made a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Day, yeah, indeed. Do you get it? I do. Okay. Thanks. Um, Bugs Bunny. Huzzah. <laughs> Thank um, you. But they said that they saw a large gray stallion uh, that was, you know, being ridden by a headless man uh, shouting, it's all mine. It's all mine. Oh, I don't know what that means, but cool. Um, (laughs) And there was another sighting that was reported uh, in a local newspaper in Freer, Texas in 1969. Um, And yeah, I mean, the legend still lives on. People say they've seen the ghost of the headless rider um, on the plains of South Texas, um, especially when the moon is clear and, and bright. And the stars at night are big and bright and clap, 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 clap. Deep in the heart of Texas. It's big and brown, I think. No, it's big and bright. Uh, the stars at night are big, big and brown. Bright. Do, 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 deep in the heart of Texas. Why would they be big Texas? and brown? I don't know, but you can ask Pee Wee Herman, because that's where I know that from. Uh, you're wrong. It's fine. Okay. Whatever. I've been wrong before uh, when it comes to Pee Wee Herman, <laughs> as I think we all were. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Paul Rubens, American hero. If you want to call him that, sure. I mean, you know. Have you ever seen that um the stage show they did before it was a TV show? Because it was I think the new one is on HBO like yeah, if you have I've HBO. I've only seen the new one. Yeah, if you have it on like HBO Go or now, I think it's uh on there. I know that you and I watch that, but I, and I told you, it's basically the same show, but with some updated jokes, like modernized jokes. But it was back in like the mid-80s, and I saw it on Showtime or HBO or something way back in the day. It was on Broadway. I think it was on Broadway, or it was off-Broadway. I have no idea what you're talking about, but it's The Pee Wee Herman show, before yeah, it was a kid's television it, show, was an adult-themed kids show on stage. It was a stage okay. show. I mean, I didn't know that. I was oh, never yeah. a Pee Wee fan. So. Well, I wasn't either, but we ta- we had we you and I have had this conversation when we watched the other one. That's what I'm telling you. Cool. <laughs> anyway, y'all, if you can find that, seek it out. Because it was before Lawrence Fishburne was even involved. I think Phil Hartman was uh, in the original one, uh, just like the TV show. I can't remember, though. But seek it out if you can find it. It's wonderful. It's so good. And we'll see y'all next week. <laughs> I think I've got another story. Oh, though. okay. Yeah, okay. Let's do that then. Okay. <laughs> this was fun. Excellent. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to express that Paul Rubens is an American hero. I don't care if he jerked off in a theater. Who hasn't? Come I mean, on. I haven't, A. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, if it was just a regular movie theater, I would have been a little bit mad about it. But I mean, it's a porn theater. Right. What else are you going to do in a porn theater? Like, they, like I judged him else. way less when I realized that it wasn't like a... like. Yeah. They came in know. with a flashlight and everybody else put their dick away. And Paul Rubens was like, I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> <laughs> Can you fuck off? This is so awkward. Can we stop talking about <laughs> Pee Wee's Pee Wee? <laughs> Yeah, they shined the light on him, and he went, I'm Pee Wee Herman, of course my dick is in my hand. Fuck off. Oh, I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the title of the episode. I'm Pee Wee Herman, of course my dick is in my hand. Mm, we're not calling it that. All right, we'll take out the Pee Wee Herman part. 
So it'll be, of course, my dick is in my hand. Let me jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, are you ready for your second episode or second story of yeah. the episode? Yeah, I'm so ready. Okay. Well, we're going to future Florida. All right. And we're going to be talking about John Titor. Okay. Teeter, tighter, I don't know. <laughs> People say it both ways, and I just like saying Titor because it sounds more like cool. But okay. Titor is a thing, too. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. no oh, idea. Ah, yes. No I'm clue. I'm so excited. Welcome to the weirdness. Okay. Thank so you. on June the 27th of January in 2001. There was a message that showed up on an online forum called Post to Post, which was a forum that was created and... Space Ghost Post to Post? No. um, Mm. It was created and hosted by the Coast to Coast AM show and host Art Bell. And I assume you know about that, right? No. I might, but like... I'm just so out of it right now. Okay, so Coast to Coast AM <laughs> is a just a fucking weird radio show, and they've got a podcast and all of that stuff now. Um, oh, it's okay. been taken over by, I believe, Jim Harold. But um, Art Bell was the original guy that ran it and did it, and it was an AM radio station, like talk radio kind of thing. Okay. And they covered conspiracies, paranormal um aliens just whatever kind of weird shit that you could think of that's what happened so kind of like what we do uh yeah but like extra like yeah i mean we don't work hard but you know it sounds like what we do well i mean they had call in people like they had vampires on they had uh Wait, like people who thought they were va- vampires okay i was yes. gonna say they had like uh self-identified vampires on they had segments on people that had telekinesis and all like just any kind of weird fringe paranormal that conspiracy they had telekinesis weirdness anybody <laughs> that had weirdness this is they just put it on and they talked about it 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 was it was just a lot um okay. And so they had this online forum, you know, it's 2001, it's sort of the beginning of everybody getting the internet, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they had those chat rooms and forum boards, and this post happened on uh, post to post. Um, And so it was a post from a man that was claiming to be a time traveler from the year 2036 Uh and he was on a mission from the u.s government to retrieve a very specific computer system Uh uh-oh shot in the dark okay which computer system was it there go ahead which computer system was it was Mm -hmm. it the trs 80 the ibm 5100 or the apple II? um just because I know how unsuccessful it was. I will say the Apple II. No. God damn it. <laughs> I was just hoping that, like, that's the one thing the Apple II had going for it. That that one guy wanted one? Yeah. That, that he had to come from the future to be like, you know, this thing is so important in the history of mankind. But if you've seen the... Uh, I want a shot, too. The Jobs movie. the uh, Not the Ashton Kutcher one, the other one. The I've one not that was seen good. either of them. The one that weirdly, the good one had Seth Rogen in it. <laughs> that's, he that's was Steve Wozniak. That you ever hear? He was Steve Wozniak, and he was really good in it. Cool. Anyway, I, like I said, I've never seen anything about. Yeah, it. it's really good. The Apple II fucking sucked. Apparently, like it was just a giant crash. Of course, but I mean, anyone with any knowledge of history knows that as well. Um, but like, what what did they originally call it? Like the Lucy or something? It was named after his daughter. Something I have no like idea. That. I know nothing about that anyway, shit. Anyway, that's not the answer. It's not. So the answer was the matter. IBM 5100. Yeah, I was going to say that, god damn it. Because that's <laughs> the one that plays chess and shit. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking what about. What are you talking about? You know about? what I'm talking about. Watson. Watson plays chess. Yeah, but it's from IBM. It's not yeah. just... Okay. Yeah, it's the one that plays chess. Dude, you're wrong, but whatever. Um... So this is the post. It says, greetings. I am a time traveler from the year 2036. My name I am is on Watson. My- God damn it, Mitchell. Did they say my name is Watson? No. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Greetings. I am a time traveler from the year 2036. I am on my way home after getting an IBM 5100 computer system from the year 1975. Oh, God. My time machine is a stationary mass temporal displacement unit manufactured by General Electric. The unit is powered by two top spin dual positive singularities that produce a standard offset tipler sinusoid i will be what? happy to post pictures of the unit end post you know that just sounds like a fucking crazy sex toy <laughs> like a tickler seismopod or whatever you said it was <laughs> seismosoid a, i want a tickler seismopod that sounds amazing <laughs> oh but you just said, wait for your birthday but i said a tipler sinusoid oh yeah that still sounds like a fucking sex toy <laughs> It's just not for tickling this time. It's tick for tickling the insides. Oh, gross. You know what I anyway, mean. Anyway, so the man that posted it, uh, his name was John Titor, uh, and he ended up describing himself on a series of different posts on a bunch of different forums across the internet. Um, he described himself as an American soldier from the future. He claimed that the reason he was traveling back in time was to control you know, to like retrieve that mm -hmm. IBM 5100 and he was retrieving it because it contained a component of vital importance to the future. What was there it? was some kind of obsolete code that was mm -hmm. in one of these things that was really necessary for something that they needed in the future. And that okay. was kind of as far as they got with that. Was like, it dark matter? Um, what dark matter? Is that what they were looking for? Um, no, it was mm. a, like a piece of code that this particular machine contained <laughs> that none of the rest of them did. And uh, there was a lot more specific, like there's one thing about this guy is that <laughs> like he legitimately has a lot of actual computer and physics yeah. and all sorts of stuff, knowledge. So it's above my pay grade. I am not that good at math at all. He didn't scrimp um, on the details. No, the details are actually like skimp. The, did I just say a street form of shrimp? No. Is scrimp the right word? No, skimp is skimp. the right yeah, word. Yeah, I said, I said scrimp. <laughs> no, you said skimp. You had it right the first time. Oh, no, no, I said scrimp. I felt the R roll off the tongue. All right. Well, anyway, mm. so what I'm saying is there's a lot more detail that I'm not going to go into because I'm not capable of going into it because my brain hurts. Tell but. it to me. I'll know it. <laughs> No, I know you computers. Won't. You really won't. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this was the story that he maintained throughout all of the rest of the posts that he ever posted. So throughout the rest of his posts, you can sort of um, gather together different pieces and, and parts of what he is claiming is, you know, the entire story. What mm -hmm. happened, what's going on, all, all that stuff. So we're going to sort of go through it a little bit. Um, so God, that dog is so loud. <laughs> she is. Um, so Titor claimed that we inhabit what he calls a superverse, where every possibility for everything ever is happening concurrently at the same time across an infinite number of parallel universes. Sounds like Bioshock Infinite. Sure. Great game. Yeah, I've I've seen that. Um, Great game. That part of that game, and yeah. Um, kind of like that. Um, so by traveling through different times and dimensions into the past, uh, John Tor Titor said that um, basically he would never be able to return back to the exact dimension that he came from, but he expected to travel to one that was very marginally different to his original timeline. And so, mm. you know, close enough, I guess. So he could return to Earth 643. If you've seen Spider-Man Far From Home. Am yeah, I right? Yeah. Something instead like of that. instead of his Earth. Yeah, some, something like that. Which was 336, of course. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I have seen that movie and it took me a minute to see what you were talking about. But yes, yes. like that. Um, yes. But he said that the reason for that was what he called the divergency effect. And he said mm. that the universe like our universe versus the universe that he came from, there's like a 2.5% divergence from his universe, um, which okay. means that Titor's history, everything that he's recorded, everything that he knows to have happened from, um, you know, 
the time in November of 2000 when he started posting uh, till like the point before he jumped back in time or whatever. All of that stuff is going to happen, was happening, etc. But in this 2.5% divergent universe, uh, it might not all happen the same way. It might not happen, uh, be triggered by the same things. You know what I yeah, mean? Like so he's a, leaving room for his own error. He's definitely leaving a margin of error. <laughs> it just so happens that everything I said is in that 2.5%. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. you know, um, just luck of the draw. Earth 444. Uh, sucks Sorry. for you, that 2.5%. Um, but yeah, so he describes himself as being um, an American historian with a specializ- specialization in 20th century uh, America. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said he was part of the army and he received his academic scholarships and funding and stuff while he was enlisted as a soldier in the army. Um, He said that by the year of 2036, which is where he left his timeline, um, that travel had time travel had been developed by the government and it had been used for several years, uh, but that it was not being used by the general public. It was not accessible by the general public. He said that he specifically had been chosen to be sent to the year 1975 with a mission to retrieve that IBM 5100 portable computer, mm-hmm. um, which contained that outdated piece of coding that was needed in the future, which, I I mean, 2036 is not really that far from 2000. You know, no. like, that's 36 yeah. years. Like, there's going to be some fucking antique dealer that's got one of those bitches. Like, right. Okay, fine, sir. Whatever. You've got to go back and get the fresh one, I I guess. All right, fine. Um, And the army had chosen John Titor because he had very specific historical knowledge and because his grandfather had actually been one of the people who actually worked on the IBM 5100 when it was being designed in the 1970s. So So how old was he in 2000? In 2000. I don't know that they ever gave an age for him. That's interesting. He had to be at least 18. Yeah. And he's jumping from 2000, right? Not 2036? No, he's jumping from 2036. Okay. never mind. He went to 1975. He was on his way back to 2036. Right. But he stopped in 2000 for personal reasons. <laughs> he said he his grandfather from 2036, which I get fucking old man but apparently he made a (laughs) promise to his grandfather that he would stop in 2000 for personal reasons Mm -hmm. but he never said what the personal reasons were well i was just worried about the timeline because if this was 1979 Mm -hmm. and it was 2000 and he was in the army i'd have a problem with his grandfather being the one that worked on it i understand that in 2036 it makes more sense yeah so Mm -hmm. i support this man and his endeavors so far Yeah, so he made this weird promise to his grandfather that he would return to the year 2000. And he never says anything, like I said, other than, yeah, personal reasons. I just had to be in 2000. Um, And, you know, I guess while I'm in 2000, I'm just going to, like, tell people shit. Why not? Right? He had to set up (laughs) 9-11. That's what it was. I mean, maybe. (laughs) Yep. Y'all didn't know about Osama bin Titor? Oh. I don't think that's a thing, man. Wasn't that his name? Titor? Titor. Titor, Titor, something like that. There you go. Um, But yeah, so basically a lot of people are like, okay, what the fuck? Like, you need a computer from 1975, but you're from 2036. How is that even possible? And you're stopping in 2000 to get it? Yeah, and you're stopping. (laughs) No, he stopped in 1975 to get it. He got a fresh one, and then he stopped in 2000 for funsies. (laughs) Okay. I'm following a little bit better now. Time it travel was... is always difficult to talk about. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I mean, fuck this guy. Yeah. So uh, the article that I was reading brought up sort of an interesting thing. And a lot of people that are people that believe in this John Titor character, um, they bring this up a lot. They say, you know, why would a future society need this outdated computer? Why is it it's all bullshit stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, and they bring up the fact that in 2002, NASA had a similar issue. Um, and there was like a booster testing machine that they were building. And it took these specific types of Intel chips 
that were kind of obsolete by the time that they were testing. Mm -hmm. They they were using this equipment in 2002. Um, So they had to buy old shitty medical equipment off of eBay to scavenge the (laughs) Intel 8086 chips from the 1970s out of those pieces of machinery, which, yeah, I get it. But like, let me say this. Couldn't have you have bought one on like future eBay or something? Right. I mean, yeah, you could have just gotten one. Well, what I was going to say was maybe he is building his own classic video game system. Like right now we have all the NES classics and all that shit. Maybe that's what he was doing was he was making his IBM to run fucking Pitfall or something, you know. Couldn't he have just used an emulator? Because those are a thing, too. Well, yeah, but could, can't all the people that buy the NES classics and all the NES cartridges, they do it because they want to, right? Yeah, but they're buying a ready-made thing. They're not, right. like, going back in time. A lot time of people to... build them, too, though. I, I, I understand your point, but people also build and get the parts and make their own as well. Yeah. Like a Raspberry Pi thing is like that. Yeah, yeah. I get that. But I don't understand where that has anything to do with going back in time to get obsolete equipment. I'm just trying to give this guy an alibi. For the military, man. Because he's definitely killing people throughout time. So I'm just trying to give him a little bit of an alibi. So your thought is he's building a gaming system by slaughtering people across timelines? The the two aren't related. (laughs) I'm saying he's collecting shit. He went back to 75 to kill somebody. He stopped in 2000 to get his part. And he's no, going he stopped in 1975 to get the part. Oh, okay. The personal reasons is the 2000, and yes. that's where he stopped to kill someone. Yes. Okay, I got you. Okay, you're good? Yeah. We're he killed Osama bin anymore. Laden and set up 9-11. <sighs> he didn't kill Osama bin Laden because that didn't happen until years later. Well, you know, the the SEALs actually got Titor <laughs> when they what? got him. That's, okay. why they, that's why we never got the body. That's why they dumped him at sea, because it was really this Titor guy. Ah. Uh. All right. Well, yep. maybe let's talk about some of the things that he said was going to happen. Okay. Since, you know, this is 2019 Did and he, he made predictions in 2000. So he predicted the NES classic, didn't he? He didn't. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, that fucker. Um, so here is a post from him. It says the year 2008 was a general date by which time everyone will realize the world they thought they were living in was over. Yeah, I, I get that. That's when I graduated. I feel you. It's when um, it's when Obama was elected. <laughs> it was bad news for so many people for no fucking reason. <laughs> but so many people were like, the Antichrist. Yeah. Look how dark his skin is. Bless it. Oh. <laughs> okay, continued. It says, uh, the Civil War in the United States will start in 2004. I would describe it as having a Waco type event every month that steadily gets worse. The conflict will consume everyone in the U.S. by 2012 and end in 2015 with a very short World War Three. Well, none of that fucking happened. Yeah, none of that shit happened. So <laughs> I mean, um, on very small scales, he was right. I mean, little bits and pieces, but like not. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was no World War Three. There's no. Yeah, well, it's not a thing. Is he using our calendar? Maybe we haven't gotten to 2004 yet by how the future views the calendar. No, it's the same calendar, man. It was only right. like 36 years difference. <laughs> like that's We'll that's see, not... Leah. We'll see. <laughs> the Chinese use a completely different calendar. Uh, I'm just saying. He's from the United States. The dude's from Florida. Like, yeah, in maybe China Florida. takes over by 2036, Leah. No, he doesn't say anything about China. Well, actually, he does, but the Russians... <laughs> anyway, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I'm just so glad I'm right. Oh, you're not right. Though, I traveled. At all. I traveled forward in time, and I saw all oh, this guy's bullshit predictions, and I figured them all out. Go yeah, ahead, Leah. Definitely. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, th- basically, he says that uh, there's going to be a lot of tension between uh, local governments and. Uh, you know, the federal government. And he just keeps talking in these posts about how his life as a young man was defined by war and uh, civil unrest in the United States and how cities became controlled by federal authorities. But like the more rural areas and the country sections were more like self-sustaining kind of populations. Mm -hmm. And it was really, you know, 
like a lot of guerrilla warfare between uh, the country settlers and the city folk. Um, okay. And basically across the nation, people living in the country were taking up arms against uh, the cities that were held by the federal government. And basically just a, like a civil war kind of situation. Uh, and I'm going to quote from a few more of his posts. It says, Yay. when the civil conflict started and got worse, people generally decided to either stay in the cities and lose most of their civil rights under the guise of security or lose or leave the cities for more isolated and rural areas. Our home was searched once and the neighbor across the street was arrested for some unknown reason hmm. that convinced my father to leave the city. From the age of 8 to 12, we lived away from the cities and spent most of our time in a farm community with other families, avoiding conflict with the federal police and National Guard. By that time, it was pretty clear that we were not going back to what we had, and the division between cities and country was well-defined. Um, hmm. And then he goes on to say, I sh uh, joined a shotgun infantry unit in 2011. I served with the Fighting Diamondbacks for about four years. The Civil War ended in 2015 when Russia attacked the U.S. cities, uh, China, and Europe. So there so, was a nuclear war. Okay, I was going to say, why would that end our Civil War? Uh, because uh, it became a nuclear conflict. Okay. Um, and he says, like, nuclear war is a very undesirable thing, but the uh, it's not the end of the world. There are areas and cities we can't enter, and the environment did suffer a great deal of damage, but we are recovering. Isn't Hiroshima a thriving city today? The major physical effects include skin cancer, infertility, infection, etc. Almost everyone has some sort of physical remnant from the war. Um, well, okay. There's a lot um, wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, Hiroshima is a thriving city today. Um, you know, from where he was, 2036 is almost 90 years afterwards. Yeah. So, I mean, well, actually, it's more than 90 years, right? Because it was 45 when the bombs were dropped. Baby doll, I'm bad at math, so... Anyway, <laughs> it's it's about 90 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, cool. he said, yeah, we recovered in 15. No, you fucking didn't. People still can't go near, uh, what's the place in Russia? Chernobyl? Chernobyl. People still can't go fucking near Chernobyl. Yes, they can. But well, they, they have can. to go in hazmat suits, and they probably shouldn't. That's what I'm saying. Like, they still have... To, there's still fallout there yeah. is my point anyway fuck this guy um, i'm not he, okay with it <laughs> he also said that after the war the united states reformed itself um, they said that the u.s still has a representative republic in 2036 um but that it was touch and go for a little bit after the war uh, oh. after the war was over he said that the u.s divided into five general areas based on their economic and defensive strengths um, and a lot of people blamed the government uh, itself for the war. Why? And they said that the last Constitutional Congress was held in 2020. So looking forward to that. Oh, please. Um, and they said that they officially decided to scrap the Constitution and start over. But they couldn't decide and figure out anything that was better than the Constitution. So they're like, okay, maybe it's not the Constitution. Maybe we're all just assholes. <laughs> so... <laughs> They started just Can't making be. a few different small changes to the Constitution and the executive branch, but um, it's still pretty much what we have today, uh, government-wise. Yeah. Uh, but the federal power has been more decentralized, and it's more focused on, like, small communities. Um, apparently, the aftermath of World War III, uh, all of the su survivors uh, basically sort of go down into like small communities they said that um basically everything's more focused on community and family life all of the food is grown locally all of the animals are raised locally but it's all nuclear yeah whatever um all right. <laughs> some of it's nuclear um, and his quote is, in 2036, I live in central Florida with my family, and I'm currently stationed at an army base in Tampa. The f people that survived grew closer together. Life is centered on family and then community. I cannot imagine living even a few hundred miles away from my parents. God, I would hate that <laughs> so much if shit was centered on family. Why? Well, I don't care for my family. <laughs> Yours is fine. I don't care for mine. And that's why I'm like happy to, you know be away from that huh? but well well i mean my family's pretty fucking stupid 
Here's another quote. It says, There is no large industrial complex creating masses of useless food and recreational items. Food and livestock is grown and sold locally. People spend much more time reading and talking together face to face. Religion is taken seriously and everyone can multiply and divide in their heads. You know what? (laughs) He's right. We are heading directly to this fucking bullshit. (laughs) Because the religious extremists are so close to getting exactly what they want. Ugh, but I can't multiply and divide in my head, so clearly yeah, this is bullshit. You're, you are one that is being taken out. I was going to say, does that mean I don't survive the war? Because fuck yeah. me. Um, yeah, you anyway. might be better off. We all might be better off. <laughs> because if you can't multiply and divide, Leah, well, I, may, I may have to leave you behind yeah. in the apocalypse. Because <laughs> I need someone that can divvy out some fucking rations. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time 2034 rolled around peace had been completely reinstated and travel had time travel had been invented um but titor did point out that in his future it wasn't like i said before being made available for public use it was just uh, official purposes only the general public knew that it was a thing but they were not allowed to access it um, he discussed time travel at length. He talked about its moral implications. He talked about his own timeline, returning to timelines, um, and, uh, I mean, just all sorts of stuff. He, they even said that the government in his time period considered using time travel as like a capital punishment kind of thing, which, I Why? mean, bullshit, send your criminals back to us. Yeah. Not Maybe cool, that's man. where we are. <laughs> All the fucking dumbasses came back here and we're like, Christianity is the way. And then that's why we're where we are right you now. You gotta calm down with that, baby. No, I do not. Yes, you do. Fuck that shit. Um, anyway, so let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, um and people keep asking him, like, why the fuck are you talking about this in so much detail if you're like a legit time traveler like This is kind of weird. Did they tell you to do this? Are you planting information? Are you trying to stop the war? And he was like, no, I just want to talk about it. (laughs) He he just kept saying, I think the war is going to be good for you and good for your society. I don't want to stop it. Like, we're way better off after all this shit goes down. But like, you know, just letting you know what's going on. Just, hey, man. And then he said, if you have a few minutes. I'd like to talk to you about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Oh, my God. I can't stop, Leah. I can't. You've got to knock it off. I can't. I can't. Anyway, he said that. It makes me so happy. um, He also realizes that nobody's going to fucking believe him. So he's just going to like tell if everything just sort of like a weird future therapy board post thing. I don't know. It's strange. Like he's just using 2000 as a place to vent his his emotions about what happened basically okay like i get it um he says i realize there's no way for anyone to believe me with absolute certainty so i hope at least i'm entertaining i realize my claims are a bit ridiculous but my intent is not really to be believed in fact over this medium it's impossible to prove i'm a time traveler therefore it's impossible to believe Hmm. um so like he knows that he's he's bullshit basically is the um, internet still a thing in 2036? Yes, apparently it is. But like, you know, like the internet. I have no idea. Like, Are you asking, is there still porn? Like fucking hardcore, uncensored pornography. Yes, definitely. You don't know that. <laughs> you didn't no. talk to this guy. He never said anything about pornography, but well, I'm I'm assuming. Shows what he knows. <laughs> anyway, so the reason, though, that a lot of this stuff gets a little bit more like obviously the whole war shit it, it's it's bullshit none of it happened unless you believe in his 2.5 percent like divergency principle or whatever um but the reason anybody gave this dude a time of day is because of what he said about time travel and his time machine um so he hasn't a very extensive knowledge of theoretical physics. Um, he knows about science mm-hmm. and technology to a really in-depth level. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually posted pictures of his time machine. And he uh, posted scans of the operating instruction, the manual from General Electric. Um, I would love to see those. I've got scans those. of it right here. Well, no. I mean, do you have pictures of the time machine? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is the... Um, 
picture from the manual. Oh, so it's kind of like a briefcase type of thing. Um, it weighs about 500 pounds, and they're oh, generally Jesus. mounted in something. So his was mounted in a car, and there's a picture of that later. But they have the diagrams of how everything works, mm-hmm. how all of the different waves and the, like, hoopty doopty bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not... Like, I like science, but I don't know the math behind it, so it's hard for me to have conversations like this. Um, you know what the time machine looks but like? But I mean, yeah. Well, there's a picture, well, like a photo. I'll well, no, send it to no, you. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, I'm I'm starting my own thing okay. now. <laughs> it looks like the uh, time machine, kind of, it obviously doesn't weigh 500 pounds in the movie, but from the movie Predestination that I made you watch that you didn't care for, but I love, yeah. with Ethan Hawke. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, y'all! Seek out that movie and watch it. It will bend your mind. It won't. It's insane. All right, it's fucking crazy, but I love it. And they have a little briefcase time machine thing in it. Yeah, but they have very detailed schematics of this entire thing. Mm. Everything's labeled. There are different pieces, and he goes through, um, like very detailed descriptions of how all of this shit works. See, this mm-hmm. is a photograph of it mounted in the car that it was installed in for him. <laughs> yeah. This guy hangs out around elementary schools, doesn't he? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, so th- the thing is that like physicists and people that like actually understand the math and all of that stuff and are generally way more intelligent than I'll ever be. Um, have all looked into this stuff and the post and basically his claims are theoretically possible. Um, Mm. There was actually a dude named uh, Martin Pullman who took Titor's descriptions of how all of this stuff works and all of the documents that he had scanned to the internet, all of those descriptions and the um, schematics and everything. Um, And he actually filed a U.S. patent for it. Oh, God. Yeah, it's the U.S. Patent 20060073976A1. Um, and it is called the Method of Gravity Distortion and Time Displacement. Oh, oh, okay. I'm with you on that. Yeah, that one. <laughs> That's all you and had to say. <laughs> so it, like, sort of could theoretically possibly be a thing, which is why everybody is a little bit shook about it. Uh, because, like, just a dude talking about, like, what happened in his future time is sort of bullshit and irritating. Like, dude, calm down. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he has all of this seeming documentation, which, I mean, and it looks like a really good schematic. It looks like if I were at Ikea, like, yeah, slot A, slot B, Heffendorfer, <laughs> I know, got it. Like, it's it's good. They figured it out. But, like, I mean, obviously, like, Nowadays, you could just go on Fiverr and say, okay, I need someone to draw me a schematic of a bullshit object and label it like this. Build me a time machine. Here's 50 bucks. (laughs) And yes, I want three drafts. (laughs) Thank you. Um, But yeah, so it's, I don't know. It always made me a little weirded out. And and obviously, a lot of this stuff is... uh, I don't know. The whole thing is bullshit. I know it's bullshit. There is no John Ty tour from 2036. But what if? No, you don't <laughs> fucking know that. Hold on. Hold on. You. What do you mean there is no John Ty tour in 2036? Fuck you. I am changing my name to Ty tour and having a <laughs> child right now who will be in the army in 2036. I will see you on the other side. You're having a child by yourself? Well, I mean, I'll figure it out. <laughs> Just, I haven't gotten there yet. I know that right now I need to change my name to Mitch Titor. <laughs> anyway, yeah. God, that rolls off the fucking tongue. That would be my comic book name if I was a comic book superhero. Yeah. So, like I said, there's a lot more information that goes along with it. Um, they found, I think someone did a bunch of like research into this particular case and they found like a guy that had started like the John Titor Foundation in Kissimmee, Florida, like several years before this started happening. So a lot of people think that this was maybe the start of like a fiction project or it was a guy a social experiment. Yeah, or like writing a movie script or something like that. They assumed that maybe that's sort of part of what it was or is, or maybe that guy just went back and claimed that web domain. I don't know. 
There's a lot of crazy theories. There's a lot of crazy shit. But if you are interested and if you want to look more into this story and I mean, if you want to like get down to the nitty gritty, because there's way more interesting shit about this. Like it is Mm -hmm. it is an intense, ridiculous topic that conspiracy theorists have gone on and on and on and on and on about. It's fascinating. Uh, yeah, it's it's bullshit, but it's fascinating. I'm enjoying um, it. And so if you're interested and you want to know more about it, you can find all of the scans of the original post from John Titor, all of the stuff, um, and you can find that at johntitor.com. Um, they've got a whole thing. They've got merch. Um, so if you want merch, <laughs> that's available. I um, want some Titor merch. Some Titor merch. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's... You know, maybe maybe we're in the 2.5 divergency era and maybe all that weird civil war shit's still coming. I don't know, but it is. It's um, on the way. You know, is time travel a thing or not? I don't know. The whole fact that his his thoughts are plausible makes me feel like cuz initially you're like this is just a troll in a basement. Like shut the fuck up. <laughs> but then you're like Okay, maybe it's a really fucking smart troll in a basement, and then that's where I have my issues. I don't know. I don't know. I'll go with the troll in a basement thing. Okay. Where did he get that um, car with the thing in it, then? What are those photos of? Leah, he spends all of his time (laughs) in a basement. (laughs) That's all that he had time to do was sit there and build that shit. But, like, he did build it, though. And there's yeah. schematics, like, really good actual schematic yeah, drawings of everything. There are so many people in this world that just waste their time. Yeah. And it sounds like he was one of them. Mr. Titor. But, like, maybe it was, like, a like a weird alternate reality game before those were even a thing. I don't know. I don't know. I just want to know more about it because, like, this story has always made me go. I know what it was. What? It was the very first Hunter killer. <laughs> and John Titor is the fucking killer. <laughs> he murdered so many elementary school kids. Uh, hey, let me show you my time machine in the trunk. There's candy with it. <laughs> so, Hunt a Killer came out with this thing 20 years before they became a company? I have some really cool future candy. <laughs> okay, anyway, so... <laughs> That was John Titor. That was skimming the surface. If y'all are conspiracy minded like I can be sometimes, go check it out. It's a very interesting story. There are documentaries. I think there's like a movie supposed to be coming out about it. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, Yeah. So it's a really interesting topic. If you're interested, uh, give it a quick Google because I promise you, you will be entertained at the very least. Yeah. I was entertained. I know that. Yeah. Well... Are we going to hit up a uh, a toast? We sure are. Are Mm. you ready to hoist your goblets high into the sky? So ready. Um, Let's toast uh, El Muerto and John Titor. Yay. Okay. Don't you dare rustle horses from Creed Taylor's land. He'll slice off your head if you're caught with his brand. This er, is Titor a traveler from beyond the wormhole or just an example of an internet troll? Drink. I mean, definitely internet troll, but I always love when you use the term wormhole. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It's just, it, it sounds so interesting coming off of your lips. You don't like it how I say wormhole? No, I said it sounds interesting. Interesting is not a good word most of the time. It's interesting. <laughs> now, if I say it like that, you know, the way you say wormhole is... Interesting. See, that's a problem. You don't understand, Mitchell. I got interesting from lots of people my entire life, and I came to realize <laughs> that interesting was never a good thing. But was it like one eyebrow cocked? Interesting. No, like that like, kind of you thing. You made an interesting choice there. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting color palette you chose. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, no, yeah. I get interesting a lot because I'm a fucking weirdo. Um, You're a very interesting person. Like, when I was taking art classes in college, like, I've told you this before, like, we could all be drawing the same fucking still life, and there were no rules about it, just draw the fucking still life. I would laser in on one section of the still life that I really liked, that I thought I could draw and do a good job of, and I did, but everybody else picked a different fucking thing. And yeah. the art professor, who I very much disliked, by the way, she mm-hmm. was a drawing teacher and wore fucking 
four inch stilettos in a drawing class at eight o'clock in the morning beside the point yeah i'm glad we went into that i'm sorry hey, interesting choice mad. focusing in on her stilettos you're right <laughs> but like i would have one piece drawn in the entire class everybody else is all the art students like the real art students i was not from the art department but mm. all of them would have like basically the same picture in like a couple of different styles but like they all had the same picture and then this fucking weirdo over here decides to draw like a corner of something and i always got the oh that's an interesting perspective mm-hmm. you get a seat like fuck yeah. that bitch by it's the awful. way you Hate should the be word wearing heels <laughs> to class every morning oh interesting shoe choice this morning <laughs> oh we're a lot of flip-flops in college fuck off see i've never been called interesting just mostly plain oh no uh, interesting is all i ever get because apparently just <laughs> fucking weirdo is kind of not as nice so but see you could take interesting and run with it you take interesting to be a bad thing you could take it and go yeah this corner of the still life is fucking tits and that's why i drew it (laughs) not like not literal tits like tits to mean fucking awesome especially the way that i do it well actually that's why it's interesting (laughs) eat a dick with your four inch heels well actually the drawing that i was talking about still hangs in my dad's house but of tits um, it it actually is of a mannequin torso so yes tits (laughs) (laughs) oh god you actually drew tits i did they were shiny plastic tits but tits nonetheless hey tits are tits my love (laughs) tits be tits and you know that oh we have diverged from the topic <laughs> we are in that 2.5 percent <laughs> right now we're in the 2.5 divergency from the alternate reality yeah. timeline you know what in a parallel universe we are so fucking yeah. popular titor, we- <laughs> titor did not see this 2.5 percent podcast episode right here Sure didn't. Oh, let's Fuck get on the better timeline where we're making a lot of money doing. We this. are in the two point five percent. I mean, if we can merge, <laughs> if we can merge the timelines and like kill our alternate, you know, <laughs> selves. But you know what that means? What's in that? the alternate reality, the others are too popular, oh, and they're yeah. plotting to kill us to take over our fucking boring ass <laughs> lives. Our wait, our interesting <laughs> lives. That's what they're waiting to do. It's fucking assholes. Oh. Uh, what a dick god just in another reality we play the opry in nashville oh my god let's do it yeah i don't want to fucking do that i do i fucking love the opry yeah but i don't want to be on stage i do that place holds like five thousand people yeah it does put me in front of a crowd hell yeah all right y'all tell some friends (laughs) we need to fill up the fucking opry we're playing there in a month (laughs) you know in the alternate timeline Oh, God, the 2.5% is calling my name. Oh, yeah, I'm there with you. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's enough. <laughs> Cut it out. Y'all follow us on all of your social medias. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Southern Spirits Podcast. We are there. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Southern Spirits Podcast. Send us any uh, personal stories or questions for midweek minis to our email address, southernspiritspodcast at gmail.com, or to any of those social medias. We will find them there, and we will put it on. Right, Leah? Sure will. Right. Send us any postcards for our brand new uh, postcard wall that will definitely go up this weekend. (laughs) Maybe. Right? Yeah. There you go. To our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 1743, Hartsell, Alabama, H-A-R-T-S-E-L-L-E, 35640. And you know what? This was a really fun episode, and I'm glad that we did it, no matter if our alternate selves liked it or not. (laughs) So we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all.